how do we create a new KTOR project? Oh, we've got two options. First is using uh, start.ktor.io, and the second being create using IntelliJ Ultimate. So let's start by using the start.ktor.io browser-based tool. So if I come over into my web browser and just type in start.ktor.io, we'll see we end up with this KTOR project generator. And this is probably the way that most people will create a new KTOR project from scratch. You used to be able to create a KTOR project using IntelliJ Community Edition. And for whatever reason, that option is no longer there. And so unless you have IntelliJ Ultimate, this, to my knowledge, is the best way to create uh, this kind of project. The creation tool here is fairly straightforward. We can start here by creating a project name. Um, so I'm going to just name this um, start KTOR IO sample. And the next thing you can see here is we've got a couple options. We have an add plugins and we have an adjust project settings. So if we expand this, um, this brings up some useful set of tools that you probably are going to want to configure. So in particular, we've got the, the package name here. So I'm going to change this to be goobar.dev, um, but you could update this to be whatever you wanted. And you'll see once you've updated the, the package name here in the website field, it automatically updates the uh, full artifact ID. Um, after that, the other couple things to be aware of here is KTOR version. Um, by default, it's picking the, the newest KTOR version here of 2.3.7. You could choose the, the 3.0 beta. Um, at some point on the stream, we'll probably migrate over to 3.0 once it's you know in a stable release. We'll see how long that takes. But for now, just going to stick with the 2.3.7 latest stable version. Um, for engine, um, this is the, the server engine uh, to run the, the application on. Um, by default, it chooses Netty here. You could also pick uh, Jetty CIO, which is the, the coroutines uh, server engine from JetBrains uh, or, or Tomcat. For everything I've done with KTOR up to, to this point, Netty has worked perfectly fine. So I'm going to choose that. And the, the last one here is configuration. So basically, we can configure our service in a couple of ways. And, and when I say configure the service, this is things like what port to accept incoming traffic on, how to specify the, the engine, how to add additional plugin features to, to the application. So the couple options we have is uh, YAML. Uh, we can have a Hokan file here, or we can do all of the configuration in code. Today, I'm just gonna stick with configuration code. Um, I like the configuration and code option because you get nice uh, type safety and um, just a little bit more comfortable writing uh, Kotlin code than I am writing like Hokan file or, or a YAML file. You can choose either Gradle Kotlin, Gradle Groovy, or Maven for your KTOR project. Um, I'm going to leave Gradle Kotlin selected, which is the default, um, but if you're more familiar with uh, Maven or you'd rather use Groovy for your Gradle build scripts rather than Kotlin, you can uh, make those decisions as well. It's not going to really change how we build the application, just maybe how we um, work in our build script files and manage dependencies. So now once we're happy with the, the project settings, we can go ahead and um, add plugins here. So if you're not familiar, plugins in KTOR is basically how we add features. So if you scroll through here, you can see this first list here. We have a section for security and we see authentication, authentication basic, JWT, OAuth. So these are all different application features that are made available through this uh, KTOR plugin mechanism that we can install into the KTOR application pipeline and allow us to add new things to, to our application code. So for example, basic authentication would allow us to use some basic like username password authentication to protect particular routes in our application. If we keep scrolling down this list, we'll see other things like resources, routing, caching headers, default headers, call logging, JSON serialization, a number of useful things here. So if you're coming into this and you know like, exactly what you want to build, you want to just jump right in, you can add a lot of these features from here off the bat. 
we're going to add just a couple of basic ones to get us started. So we definitely want some routing. So we'll add routing because we want to have endpoints on our service. I am going to add default headers so we can have our kind of standard set of headers added to, to any requests. We could add call logging as well. I think we'll leave it at that. So once we have that, we can uh, click on this uh, plugins added thing um, down here at the bottom and you can see which ones you've added. So you can give yourself a, a quick review. And once you're happy with this, we can go ahead and click generate project. Uh, as you can see there, once you click generate project, it's going to download a zipped uh, project folder for you. And then you can open that up on your machine and, and check out what it created. We are going to do just that. Um, first, I am going to extract that folder. And then I'm going to open up my IntelliJ here. And I am going to select open, navigate to my download folder, select that uh, unzipped start Ktor IO sample project folder and select open. I'm going to go ahead and trust the project here so I can work with it fully. Once we open that project up into IntelliJ, it's going to do its thing as it starts kind of doing the initial building and indexing and all of that. As it's working on that, we can start to explore the contents of this project and um, just see how the project creation template uh, resulted in some actual code here. So if we come into the, the root settings.gradle.kts file here, we can see that that uh, full artifact ID that we saw in the creation tool, uh, dev.gubar.startktor.io sample, we see that that becomes the, the fully qualified root project name here for the Gradle project. If we come into the build.gradle file then, we'll see the group ID for the project set to dev.gubar, which was that base package ID that we specified in the creation tool. You'll see that it gives your project a default version. Uh, we're not going to do anything really with version today. And really the last thing to take a look at here, actually it's just two last things to take a look at here. One is the, the application configuration block here. This is specifying how the, the, the application code is going to be packaged. This application configuration comes from the, the uh, Ktor plugin, I believe here, which under the hood, I believe is actually coming from the Java application plugin. And then the last thing is notice here down at the bottom, we have a number of Ktor related dependencies that have been already added to the project. So we have uh, server call logging, uh, JVM, which is some of that probably makes sense. The, the call logging makes sense because we added that call logging plugin when we were setting up the project. The JVM is added to the end automatically for us. Uh, the reason for that is because Ktor is a multi-platform library, meaning you can use it in a Kotlin multi-platform project. So you could in theory have, you know, a JVM uh, Kotlin service or maybe a Wasm Kotlin service in the future or a native running one as well. So they have different uh, qualifiers on the end of some of these uh, dependencies to identify which platform you're targeting. And then similarly, we have the default headers and then we have the server core. Uh, we have our, our Netty engine for JVM and then it also adds in some basic uh, testing stuff. And, and additionally, it also adds uh, the logback dependency here um, to provide kind of the, the back end for the, the call logging so that we can actually write out our logs to, to standard out in a structured way. All right, so now I think the project is all uh, indexed and everything. So lastly, let's go into our source directory here. So you can see within uh, source main Kotlin dev.gubar, we have two sets of things here. We have a plugins a directory folder and we have the application KT file. Now notice that the application KT file here matches in our build.gradle file this application configuration. So we're, we're saying that as we package this application, we have this main class dot set call. And we're saying that the main class, the entry point of this service should be dev gubar application KT, 
which corresponds then to the generated class for this application.kt file. So the, the reason the slight difference in the name is in how the, the bytecode is generated under the hood. And so our application.kt file will generate a class application kt uh, after the compiler runs on it. And so that's why we have to specify it with that slightly different naming convention over here in our application code. So the application itself at this point is very basic. We've got a configuration of the embedded server here. So I'm just going to put these on separate lines to make this a little bit easier to see. Um, but basically, we can specify the, the engine for that embedded server, the port to expose, the host to expose, and then this, uh, this module really is just a function that is going to be the entry point for us to then configure the rest of the service. So here we've defined that function as an extension function on the KTOR application type. And by default, the, the project creation tool created these three configuration functions for us, one for each plugin we added basically. So we see we have configure monitoring, configure HTTP, and configure routing. This is a kind of a standard convention that you'll see a lot of times when creating a new KTOR project. You don't necessarily have to structure it this way, but what you'll see is if I click into configure monitoring, for example, the, the convention here is that this is also an extension function on the application type. So that then allows us to do things like calling install and installing this feature. So this call logging, if I, if I click into this, this is a uh, public sort of top level variable here that uh, represents, you know, an application plugin taking this call logging config. Um, so this, again, this is this kind of the standard way of installing a plugin to your application with this, this install call. So similarly, if we come back to our application, we can see that we have configure HTTP, which is also an extension function uh, on application. And the last one here, we'll look at configure routing. Um, so configure routing, this is where basically our first uh, endpoint is defined. So we say if we access this, uh, the, this root route, like the base route for this service, that we should just respond with a hello world. So this is the, the basic template of the project that we get. Um, I guess while we're here, if we come back to the application KT, we'll see the, the easiest way to run the project is to come to your, your application KT and look for your main function. And next to that, if you're loaded up into IntelliJ, you should see this little green play button. And if you see that, you can click it and then select run application. Um, that's going to kick off a build. We can kind of see the output of that here. And after a few seconds, you should then see something like this in your, your output. You should see application started. You should then see it kind of a, a default log here of a KTOR application responding at, and then that, uh, that combination of the host and port that we specified in our embedded server configuration. So if I drop that URL then into my browser here, uh, we can see that we get hello world printed out to that browser window. So now we want to walk through how we can create a new KTOR project using IntelliJ and specifically IntelliJ Ultimate. So I'm going to come back here to my IntelliJ Ultimate just kind of starter window here. Like I mentioned before, you used to be able to create a KTOR project using the, the community edition, the free edition of IntelliJ. Uh, you cannot do that anymore, unfortunately. But if you do have the Intelli IntelliJ Ultimate Edition, you can select New Project. And that then opens up the, the New Project Creation tool here. And you can see over in the left side, there's a bunch of different project generators. You have a, a Maven project generator, a Spring initializer, uh, Quarkus, uh, HTML project, Compose for desktop project. But what we're looking for here is obviously the Ketor project. And so when we click on this, if you kind of were following along with the, the browser-based tool, you'll see that this looks very, very similar to what you have in the browser-based tool. You have the same options. So kind of the same thing. We're going to quickly stub out this project. And this time we want to uh, name this to, to match 
our ongoing uh, stream project. So again here, we, the repo is named Goobar Stream Tracker. So I am going to name this the same. Goobar Stream Tracker. Um, instead of going into my downloads directory, I want to move this into my Goobar URL shortener directory, um, which is the my, my local clone of the GitHub repo. I'm going to uh, deselect the create Git repository because I already have one created. I'm going to update this to goobar.dev. We can see here again, it uh, auto-populated the, the full artifact ID to dev.goobar.goobar-stream-tracker. And just like we did before, going to leave this using the Netty engine. We want it to add the sample code. And I'm going to use Gradle Kotlin for my build system with KTOR version 2.3.7 and configuration encode. So once you're happy with these settings, we can click next. And just like the browser tool, we also have the ability to add the plugins. Um, so again, I'm going to add the same plugins, which we had routing. And notice that you can uh, filter and, and search here. We had call logging. And we had default headers. So again, uh, if I want to review these, you can see next to where it says three plugins added, I can click show. And you'll see here that it has these three uh, plugins selected for us. And once we're happy with that, we can go ahead and click create once again. And just like before, that's going to um, start indexing and start doing the kind of initial uh, configuration and build of the project. Cool, looks like that's done. So again, we'll just quickly take a look at this again. We can see that in the settings.gradle.kts uh, file, the, the root project for the, the Gradle project is configured like it was before. Our build.gradle project also looks the, the same. We have the same plugins. We have our application configuration where we set the entry point class for the, the server engine. And we have the same dependencies, the, the core JVM, the call logging, default headers, Netty, logback, and the testing dependencies. And just to kind of wrap up the, the review here quickly again, we've got application.kt. And again, I'm just gonna kind of clean this up, put these on separate lines because I find it a little bit easier to read. We've got our same sort of default set of um, configuration functions that are adding in the, the call logging, the default headers, and then the, the basic routing, and with the same basic hello world root route. Let's run this one time just to make sure that uh, this one is running just like the other one did. Excellent, looks like that is up and running as we can see from the, the build output down here. So if we load back up in to our browser, we make that same request. Um, we can see that the output looks the same, but just to verify that that actually did run, we can come back here down into our build output again, and we see those same logs. So we can see that definitely it, uh, it, it hit the service, it matched the route segments, and ultimately returned what we were expecting to, which was this uh, 200 OK response. Perfect. So that uh, has now shown us what it looks like to walk through creating a new KTOR project from the start.ktor.io browser tool, and what it looks like to create basically the same project using IntelliJ Ultimate. 